Hello everyone, welcome back to our Grasshopper course. And I can assure you that the topic we are going to cover today is going to be the most important topic throughout our whole semester. Today we can talk about the data types, the list, and the data operations within Grasshopper. And let's look at the definition of a Grasshopper first. Someone wrote on GitHub, Grasshopper is a visual programming interface for the 3D modeling program right now. So long story short, it is an interface. What kind of interface? It is a programming interface. That means we can wrote our program or our codes inside of this interface. And what kind of programming interface it is? It is a visual programming interface. So differentiate itself from the traditional programming interface, which means that you have to type in your code line by line. In Grasshopper, you simply create your program by dragging all those components that we have been talking about constantly, right? This kind of component. So I will present it to you in the language that a lot of programmers will use. So let's talk about first thing we're going to cover today, which is data types. And before that, let's talk about what is data. According to Oxford languages, data is facts and statistics collect together for reference or analysis. So basically it's a information. It's a piece of information that you are trying to embed in your program. And then let's talk about data types. What are the types of data we're going to have in Grasshopper? So first of all, there are strings. What does that mean? That means just like a vocabulary, right? Or it means a comma or period. Hello world can be a strings. Luna is lovely can be a string, right? And integers, of course, one, two, three, four, five, four, four, five, five, six, six, this number, right? It is a integer. And the next thing, floating point numbers. What is it? It's just 1.2 or 3.6 or 445,566.888. It is a floating point numbers. And the Next thing is Booleans. Booleans, it just simply means true or false, right? If we click true here, it become true. If we click false here, it is false. And the next thing is color, right? We can input or export a color from Grasshopper. And that's it. That's most of the data types we will ever need to deal with inside of Grasshopper in general, okay? And the next thing I wanna talk about is a list. What is a list? A list is just a thing that is used to store multiple items in a single panel or single variable, okay? So a list is just a little box or little paper that contains bunch information. For example, hello world is a single piece of item, a single piece of information. But here, a list have multiple information, have hello world, Luna is lovely, is 02182, 022, right, or 79.0, all kind of information can be stored in this one list. And inside of this list, there are four different items. Each of the items has their own index. For example, hello world has index zero. Remember, in most of computer languages, the first index number is zero instead of one, okay? So Luna is lovely, index one, this number, integer, it's index two. And the last one, 79.0 is a floating points number. And then the next thing we're gonna talk about is a nested list. What is a nested list? Long story short, a nested list is just a list within a list. So again, we can consider this whole thing, right? As a list. And inside of this list, there are one, two, three, four. There are four different lists, that's it. And within each list, it have multiple data items, right? This first list has hello world, the 13. Okay, the second list have Luna is lovely and this number 22, so on and so forth. That's where we're gonna cover the second one, the nested list. And then you are gonna talk to me like, whoa, 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 wait a second. Why are we are talking about this? I just wanted to make some models, okay? Here is why. Let me show you a bunch of examples. So first, let's come to, this first example is pretty straightforward. We have two lines 
Okay, one is on the left, the green one. And the next one is on the right, which is this one that I just highlighted. And then our task is so simple. We just divide this curve or these lines into different segments, right? So this component is called divide curve, right? The second one is also divide curve. And then we get a bunch of points. If we divide some curves, of course, you are gonna use some points to divide them. And then we simply connect those points together. We get some lines, right? Straightforward. And let's look at the data structure of this things. We divide this curve. Here, there are three outputs for this component. Division points. This is a thing we're going to talk about it. The second one is a tangents. We are not going to cover it today. The last thing is parameter, which is something else we're going to talk about maybe next course. But today, let's focus on those points. In order to make it so easy for us to read the file or to read those points, they put all the points into a list. Right, and then you can see that those 89.28, those are coordinates of those points because they are on the same Y axis. So they have all the same X coordinate, right? The Y coordinates are different, of course. And then they have zeros for the Z coordinate. Why? Because they are flat. They, they don't have a height for this value. And then in order to make the users easier to get those data, right? They have those index, again, from index zero to index 10. And then second curve, same. They installed every information into a list. And then when we are connecting them together, they simply connect the first point on the list to the first point on the second list, second point on the first list, and second point on the second list so on and so forth. So they make a bunch of curves or bunch of lines in between, right? And then let's ask the next question. What if they have uneven numbers? Okay, so here on the first one, we divide this first line into 10 segments. And also we divide the second line into 10 segments too. But what if we divide them into an even number, okay? So this one, we divide the first curve into two segments, one, two, and then they have three points. And the second curve into 10 segments, they have a different amount of points among those lines. And when you connect them together, this is a rule, right? They will connect the first point on the first list with the first point on the second list, okay? And then they will connect the second point on the first list with the second point on the second list. And next, of course, they're gonna connect the last point on the first list to the third point on the second list, okay? But then it's empty here. There's no more points on the first list. What are you gonna do? They're gonna connect all the rest of the data to the last point. That's what's happening right now. This is kind of like a mapping rule or kind of connecting rule that they follow in Grasshopper. Okay, so let's look at another situation, which is this one. Wow, what's going on here? Everything is the same. We divided this into two and we divide this into 10 segments. And then it should have this kind of connection, the first point, second point, third point, and then the rest of it connect to here. Why this is happening? Whoa, something's wrong here. First of all, there's only one list here but then there are three lists on the left, right? There are one list, two list, and three lists. And then there's this little logo here or this little component. What does that mean? Okay, it's called graft. And then what graft does is that it's gonna upgrade each items inside of that list and make that item into a individual list. Okay, so let's compare, let me, Clean, clean everything. So you can see that here, it has one list, right? This one, one list have three items, index zero, index one, index two. And this part, okay, it has three lists and each list has one items. Whoa, so why is it doing something like this? Okay, so here is a mapping rule in Grasshopper. If something has 
its own list. Okay, if this list has only one items, let's say in this way, this item has the priority or have the privilege to connect with everything else in the other list. Okay, so that's the mapping rule, right? If we have everything grafted or every item has its own list on the left, it can connect with every items on the right, each by each. So that's a mapping rule here we are talking about. So the reason is simply because we grafted this, we make this one list have three items into one list, have three lists inside of this list, okay? And each of those three lists has one item inside. Again, we can consider this panel as one list. And within this list, there are three lists and each list has one item. So this is a nested list, right? A list within a list. Okay, and then someone must will ask, what if we make this list into a nested list? Let's see. Okay, we graphed it. This is just a terminology inside of Grasshopper. We graphed something and then we turn it into a nested list or we make every items within this existed list into its own lists. So we will see what's going to happen. This is the result. Well, it goes back to what we did in the first. This kind of list hierarchy just disappeared all of a sudden. It goes back to the original rule they have, right? Which is they're going to finish connecting everything on the left. And then if there's anything left on the right, they are going to connect it to the last item, right? So this is something very hard to explain verbally, but you can see that this kind of list is basically giving priorities to each of the items. And if they are equal, okay, on the left, all the items has its own list, right? On the right, every items has its own list too. They are equal right now. So they go back to the rule that they are following when they are all in single list as one of the multiple items. So I know this sounds very confusing. At this point, someone must will ask why we are doing this, why we are bothering to have a list within a list, kind of like a inception movie, a dream within a dream. What's the point of everything? Okay, here we go. Let's see what's the point of everything. Imagine you are an architect or structure engineer, and then you are dealing with tons of columns within a very complicated system. And then you want to make sure that each column has their own ID because simply because you want it to be or simply because every columns is dealing with different kinds of forces. Okay, so you want to name them in a ID system or tagging system, right? And then what are you gonna do? So this is what it, the spreadsheet did when they started to have their products in the 1980s. They have the row and then they have the column. And then, for example, this point here, you will know that, oh, it's row A and column one, right? So its ID will be A1. And what if this point, okay? So it's row F and column seven. So it has its ID F7, so on and so forth. So this kind of matrices like structure will help us to navigate a 2D environment and we can find specific coordinates or we can find specific ID for the specific items within this data structure. And some people will keep asking, so what? Well, so what? When we are making some complicated models in this program, sometimes we want to select some groups of information at the same time. And we can use this to navigate our selection. For example, if I want to select everything, on the first row here, right? And then we're just going to simply do it by using this component called list item. What is list item doing? Well, let's look at the data structure first. These are the lists that generated by this program automatically. Let's see how many lists are in this list. Okay, so this whole group of points has been embedded into one list and then each column has its individual list. Okay, let's look at it. So we have 
20 lists. Remember, the first list is 000. So the last one is 0019. So we have 20 lists. And within these 20 lists, each list has 10 items from index 0 to index 9. Great. So if we want to select everything on the first row here, it's very easy to do so. We just use this item called list item. List item, what it's doing is that you're going to select every item on the first list within this nested list. Okay, so they will select this point on list zero, and then they will select this point on list one, so on and so forth. So with the help of those kind of list functions and components, we are able to locate, find, or create specific data structure within this program. That is why we need it. And if we want to select this one, we just simply type in number one, bring it into this component. It will just search the specific items within the specific lists and so on and so forth. And if we just want to do five, we can do it and we can highlight it and just scroll it left to right, which is up to down. Okay, someone must will ask why A start from the bottom left and zero start from the bottom left too. Well, that's because we are following the X, Y coordinates system instead of like a table that we usually start everything from the left to the right, from the top to the bottom. So that's the reason why it's a little bit different. But the concept is the same, same as a spreadsheet. So that's the basic concepts of data types, list and nested lists inside of Grasshopper. And we are going to talk about all kinds of list operations, which are components you can use for different kinds of purpose within the list for the next course. Thank you.